Aha! Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today's lecture is going to be about osmolarity. So what is osmolarity? Osmolarity, basically what it is, it is the numbers, numbers of particles that are dissociated in one liter solution, in one liter solution. Therefore, it is really important to be able to calculate the number of, of particles for a substance in any questions during lectures or if you're preparing for an Aplex exam. So what do I mean by particles? And how can you calculate them? So let's take a couple of examples. We have over here sodium chloride and we have calcium chloride. Sodium chloride it dissociate into sodium plus chloride. Therefore, we have one particle and another over here. So this will equal two particles. In this example over here, we have calcium chloride. So in terms of calcium chloride, this is going to dissolve into calcium plus two chloride. Therefore, we have one and two, so this is going to be three particles. So, it is always important to be able to calculate the numbers of particles in order to solve any question associated with osmolarity or milliosmoles. So, do all solutes dissociated when they're put into solution? The answer to that is no. They do not all dissociate once they're put into solution. And the perfect example and the most common example we have in question or in practice is actually dextrose. So, dextrose does not dissociate. Therefore, the numbers of particle in this case, it's actually one. That's the exception to these. So when it comes into dextrose, keep this in mind. It's always going to be one particle. The reason why, because it's not ionic, therefore it does not dissociate. And in terms of units, so, Osmolarity comes in osmoles per liters or milliosmoles per liter. So basically, it's always normalized to one liter solution. This is very, very important. It's always normalized to one liter solution. This is why here I mentioned it's a number of particles dissolved in one liter solution. And when it comes into practice, the most common units used is milliosmoles per liter. This is the most common one that you will see probably in class or preparing for NAPLEX or in questions or anywhere you'll see. This is the most popular one that you will see during questions. So now that we have gone over the introduction for osmolarity, let's get into the equation. So what does the equation say? The equation is basically milliosmoles per liter, again, it's for one liter solution, equals weight of a substance, gram per liter. Like I said, we have always to normalize it to one liter, therefore we have gram, the weight, per liter, over molecular weight, and molecular weight basically, most commonly during questions, it's actually given, so it's something that you will find in questions. However, if it's not given in a question, what you can do, molecular weight is basically gram per mole. So these two component, they're going to be given in a question and you just gotta plug in and solve for molecular weight. Times numbers of particles. So this is where it comes in important in calculating the number of particle for a substance. Having the correct number will, be, will give you the advancing in having the correct answer for the question. Then multiplying by 1,000. 
So let's take two examples and able to, in order to understand this formula. So question number one says, what is the osmolarity? So here we're looking for osmolarity in milliosmoles. So like I said, it's most commonly going to be in milliosmoles per liter of 0.45 normal saline. So this is half saline. If the molecular weight, again, like I said, usually most commonly molecular weight is given in exam or during questions. So it's 58.4 over here. So let's first of all plug into the equation. So we're looking first of all for the weight of the substance gram per liter. So let's see over here what we have. We have 0.45% normal saline. So again, from previous lectures, we learned normal saline is basically weight per volume, right? Weight is gram, volume is milliliter. So from here, we know that. So we have 0 0.45 gram per 100 milliliter. We know this. So now we got to make it up to grams per liter. So we have milliliter. We got to take it to one liter. Equal, here is the X. We don't know how many grams. This is the um, answer to the weight of substance to gram per liter. This is what we're looking for. And here it's going to be one liter. So one liter is basically 1,000 milliliter. So now looking at this. Moving from 100 milliliter to 1,000, basically what we did, we multiplied by 10. 10 times, 10 times 100 is 1,000. Therefore, multiplying this by 10, it's going to equal the number of grams. So here, if we multiply this by 10, so 0.45 times 10 is basically 4.5 grams. And this is the weight of substance in gram per liter. So we have always to normalize it. The reason why I'm taking it to 1,000 because we have to normalize it to one liter. Okay, this is very important. You have, you have to keep this in mind always when the question is asking for osmolarity. Whenever you see this in question, you have to normalize it to 1,000 milliliter in terms of the weight, of course. So now we have this. So the equation says weight of the substance gram per liter. So this is going to be we have 4.5 gram per liter. Molecular weight, gram per mole, is basically 58.4, and this is gram per mole, times number of particles. So what do we have? We have normal saline, which is basically NaCl, and here we said early on, NaCl has two particles, right? So we know we have two particles. And this is why it's really important to calculate the correct number of particles. So we have two. So this is done now multiplying by 1,000. So if you were to multiply all this and get it all done with a calculator, you should end up with an answer of 1, 5, 4, and the units we're asking is in milliosmol per liter. So this is going to be milliosmol per liter. And this is basically the answer to this question. Now, let's look into question number two. Question number two says, what are the milliosmols? So look, here is the big difference in between this question and this. Here we're looking for the milliosmoles. We're not asking for osmolarity. We said if we're looking for osmolarity, we always have to normalize it to one liter. Therefore, okay, therefore here, we do not have to normalize it to one liter. We do not need to do this step over here. We need to normalize it to whatever solution we're given in a question. So this is very, very important. It's very easy to mix these two up. When you see milliosmoles, oh, they're asking for osmolarity, but actually they're asking for milliosmoles only. So what are the numbers of milliosmoles of dextrose? So we have dextrose over here. Remember, dextrose does not dissociate, therefore one particle. And we have a molecular weight. Again, like I mentioned, molecular weight is given in the question. Represented in 250 
milliliter of D5W weight over volume solution. So basically what we need to do in this case, we do not need, again, to normalize it to 1,000 milliliter. We got to normalize it to the solution given in the question, and here we have 250. So let's go back to D5W. We know from previous lectures that D5W is, is weight over volume, so gram over 100 milliliter. So it's going to be D5W is 5% of dextrose in water, so we have 5 gram over 100 milliliter. So we know this. Now we need to normalize it to 250. We need to figure how many grams of dextrose are in 250 milliliter. So we have 250 milliliter over here, and X is the numbers of grams, because we gotta find the weight of substance, and this is, X is basically the weight of substance. So moving from, again, let's do this method. Moving from 100 to 250, what is that? It's basically multiplying 100 by 2.5. So this is times 2.5. So if we do the same thing on this area over here, we're gonna end up with the number of grams. So 2.5 times five, that's basically 12 and a half. So here we have 12.5 grams. And this is the answer to the weight of substance. So following the equation, basically we have 12, 0.5 grams. Remember, there is no liter because we're, it's not osmolarity, it's milliosmol, so that's the difference between the two questions. So it's only going to be 12.5 grams, okay, because we did not normalize it to 1,000 milliliter. So this is going to be 12.5 grams over molecular weight, so here we have 198, and it is gram per mole, times numbers of particle, again, it's one because it does not dissociate, times 1,000. Basically, it's 1,000, so you may skip this step over here. If you notice it's dextrose, just skip this step. But if it's gonna make it easier for you for visualization, just put it in there. So here we have 12.5 gram divided by 198 gram per mole, multiplying by 1,000. And if you plug in this in the calculator, you should end up with an answer that is 63 milliosmol. Notice, it's milliosmol, no liter. Again, this is the big difference in between these two questions. This one is not normalized to one liter, it's normalized to the solution that is given the volume of solution that is given in the question or prescription. So this is it for this lecture. If you have any question, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.